Welcome to this video introduction to Power Series. Um, you may be familiar with Power Series from a calculus course you've taken um, or are currently taking. What I'm going to attempt to do in this video is, is make the concept as simple as possible and try to um, motivate why we do, why we use Power Series. Um, there's many technical details involving Power Series and it's easy to get lost in those details and kind of lose track of what the main idea is. So let's start off with, um, with a couple of functions. So we've got the functions f of x, which is, you can see, a simple quadratic function, and g of x, let's let be the square root function. Um, so these are functions you should be quite familiar with from algebra and perhaps calculus. Um, the one observation we want to make with these two functions at this point is that um, we can, with the function f, we can choose any value of x that we want and evaluate the function, we'll be able to get an output from uh, any input uh, x value. So for instance, x could be 1, in, wh in which case we get, um, it looks like negative 1 for our output. So in other words, f of 1 equals negative 1. Um, we could also put in some very large value if we wanted. We could put in a million, and we would get um, a value for f of 1 million. With g, however, we're restricted. x is only allowed to be numbers greater than or equal to 0 in order for us to actually use g. So there's a restriction on the domain of g is what we say. And the restriction is that x must be greater than or equal to 0. Now, f is an example of a polynomial function. Let's look, it's a second degree polynomial function. Let's look at a couple others. Uh, for example, the function uh, y equals one third x plus two, which you should recognize as the equation of a line, is actually a polynomial function of degree one. And uh, so is the function h of x equals x to the fourth. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say so is because this is a polynomial function as well, but it's of degree four. So f is polynomial function degree two, uh, y is a polynomial function of degree one, h is a polynomial function of degree four. What I'd like to do next is take each of those functions and just simply write them in a slightly different order. So I could write that y equals uh, 2 plus 1 third x. Um, we have f of x equals 3 minus 5x plus x squared. And h of x equals uh, 5x plus x to the fourth. So what I'm doing is rather than having the powers of x appear in uh, decreasing order as you may be used to, I'm putting them in increasing order. And that leads us then to what we're interested in, which is uh, the question of whether we could actually create uh, polynomial functions of infinite order. So for instance, uh, we'd like to maybe look at a function that looks like this, y equals, say, 1 plus one-half x plus one-fourth x squared plus one-eighth x to the third, and so on. So let's see, let's put in one more term, one-sixteenth x to the fourth plus dot, dot, dot. So we call each of these pieces that our polynomial is made up of as terms. So we have a constant term, that's one, and uh, what we call the x term, which would be one-half x, uh, an x squared term, x to the third term, and so on. And so there would be a term for every power of x. And so you might think of this as an infinite polynomial. Um, now, when we have infinitely many terms, that complicates things quite a bit over the sorts of polynomials we looked at just a couple minutes ago. Um, so the real question is here, when we put a value of x in, 
can we actually get a value of y out? So let's just look at a few uh, particular examples. Let's suppose that we had x equals 0. In that case, it should be clear that y is going to look like 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus dot, dot, dot. And so it should equal 1. Oops. Let's see. We need an equal sign in there. Equals 1. All right. So that was simple enough. Um, if we put in 0, we get 1 out for y, 0 for x. Let's suppose now that um, x equals 1. Well, things get a little bit more complicated here because now we truly are going to be adding up infinitely many numbers. But what we'll be adding is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth and so on. And the question is, does this actually add up to something? Well, it never actually adds up to something because we can't finish adding. But really the question is, as we add farther and farther out in this uh, series, do, the, do our sums get closer and closer to some particular value? And in this case, um, it's fairly easy to see what happens using a picture. So let me make a picture like this, or actually let's make it the number line. Um, so this is 0 and this is 2. And so you can see we start out with 1. So I'm going to shade in the amount of the number line that we have. So we start out with 1. Then we'll add on uh, 1 half. Okay, so when we add a half to that, we get out to 1 and a half. And then we add on a fourth, which puts, so notice at this point we filled up one and a half and we have a half remaining. If we add on a fourth, then that fills half of what was of the remaining half that was there. So now between, we're, we're up to one and three quarters, so we've got a, a quarter left between one and two. And we're going to add on an eighth, which is half of that quarter. So what happens is, um, each time we add on a new term now, we're going to fill half the space that remains between wherever we are so far and 2. And so the value of this sum will get closer and closer to 2, or we say that the sum converges to 2. Okay, so when we put 1 in for x, we'll get 2. Now, let's suppose that we were to um, put in, rather than 1, let's put in the value uh, 2. So let's go back and look at the series that we had to begin with. All right, so we have 1 plus 1 half x plus 1 fourth x squared and so on. So when x equals 2, what we get for y is we get 1 plus 1 half times 2 plus 1 fourth times 2 squared plus 1 eighth times 2 to the third, and so on. And you should see that this is actually equal to 1 plus 1, 1 half of 2, and then we have 1 fourth of 4, so plus 1 again, plus 1, and so on. So clearly, um, the, the value of uh, or these, these ones add up to, we could say infinity, although infinity is not a number. So what we'll say is that they actually don't add up, they diverge, the series diverges. So the series diverges when um, x equals 2, whereas it converged to 2 when x was 1, okay? And of course, it converges to 1 when x was 0. So this function looks like it's okay when x is 0 or 1, but when x is 2, it is not okay. Um, what we would find if we tried a couple other values, um, we would find that if x was negative 2, let's try that. And in that case, y looks like 1. Uh, plus 1 half times negative 2, plus 1 4 times negative 2 squared, plus 1 8 times negative 2 cubed, 
and so on. And you can see that what this turns out to be is 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and so on. So if we try to add these up and we keep a running sum, you can see that after our first term, if we come out right there, the sum is just 1. If we add the first two terms, the sum will be 0. When we add the first three terms, the sum is 1 again. So we get 1. And then when we add the first four terms, then the sum will be 0 again, and then 1 again, and so on. So the sum bounces back and forth between 0 and 1. So what we say is that this thing diverges as well, this series. Now it diverges in a different way than the other one. The other one just kept getting larger and larger. This one diverges because it, it doesn't settle down on a value. It keeps bouncing forth back and forth between 0 and 1. Um, one other value that I want to look at is uh, let's consider the, the situation when x equals negative 1. And by means that you learned, um, if you took a class involving sequences and series before, um, there's a way to show that in this case what we have is y equals 1 um, plus 1 half times negative 1 uh, plus 1 fourth times negative 1 squared and so on, which turns out to be 1 minus a half plus 1 fourth minus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth, and so on. And what we can, we can show using a tiny bit of theory that's not too complicated but I don't want to go into right now is that this series converges to two-thirds. Right. So what we've found, if we look back at everything we've done here, if we consider um, this, this infinite polynomial, y equals 1 plus 1 half x plus 1 fourth x squared and so on, it appears that we can get a value of y if x is 0 or 1 or negative 1. We can't get values when x is 2 or negative 2. Now, of course, there can be values um, other than just 1 uh, or 2 or negative 2, other than, than whole numbers or integers. Um, so we could try doing this for fractions. Um, it would get somewhat complicated to try to do the arithmetic involved. But suffice it to say that this infinite polynomial um, converges as long as x is between 2 and negative 2, but not including either of those. Okay, so the, the infinite polynomial actually, um, actually gives us a function. We can actually get y values out for every x between negative 2 and 2 for this particular polynomial. So uh, at this point, let's call it good for this video. We'll move on in the next video and uh, continue on with this topic.